torturer. He's kind of tortured a few opponents, you know, and uh, and I've quite, you know, it's been nice sitting back watching them go for it as well, you know, because a lot of people can be critical and think, you know, oh, Ronnie's cracked up this and that. But until you actually play someone like Mark and go through it, you know, you you don't really realise what's what's going on out there sometimes. And Ebden was a little bit like that as well, you know, they can stop you from playing, stop you from kind of getting any momentum and just, you know, everything's just like long drawn out frames and, you know, it's hard to keep concentrated for that amount of time, you know, and, uh, you know, especially in the final, best of seven, yeah, fine, best of nine, but best of, best of 19 or best of 25 or a world final, mate, it's going to be a long, long game. How would you characterise the nature of the rivalry between you two? Uh, well, I mean, obviously, my record on against Ronnie is, is quite good, obviously, probably one of the better ones out of all the players who've played him. So, I mean, I think it's great for an outsider point of view because you've got Ronnie who's so naturally talented and there's me who obviously puts the work in and has to, has to really work at the game. But, uh, obviously, it's, it's two different strategies, two different techniques. Obviously, I'm really... can be really defensive at times, can be attacking at times and is obviously always attacking, so... It's it's very strange, but every time I go to play Ronnie, you always know you're in for a tough game and you have to be at your best or you don't win. Is there a needle between the two of you? Because he's had a lot to say about your style of play over the years. Uh, a little bit. I mean, obviously, I, I never ignore anybody. Every time I'm at a venue, I always say hello to him and stuff, but there have been things he said in the press before where he, he said like probably things about me, which, obviously, whether he regrets saying, I don't know. Yeah, I mean, I think the rivalry is always going to be there, but at the end of the day, I've got respect for him as a, as a player. I think he's one of the, the greatest players to ever play our game. And I'm sure he's got respect for me. And this rivalry has grown legs a little bit. And you talked about different philosophies. And I think probably Ronnie, from what I've read, sees the philosophy uh, differently uh, to you as well. Because he said uh, about your game, he plays a very negative game, long bouts of safety, never takes on a ball unless he's going to leave it safe. Now, is that true? Is that, is that in some respects accurate? Uh, well, sometimes, obviously, I, when I'm playing, obviously, I, I sort of work out the percentages and think, well, obviously, is it worthwhile going for it? Same as everybody else does. But sometimes, obviously, if I'm struggling, yeah, I'll probably like revert to that because, obviously, if, if you are struggling, I don't see the point of like keep playing long balls, obviously, if you know you're not playing well and getting them. So I just don't think the percentage is there. But uh, at the same time, in a way as well, obviously, by Ronnie coming out with that comment, I, obviously, I know that that's what he's thinking. So obviously, I'd be wrong if I wasn't playing that kind of game against him because I know it's getting into his head. Secretly, does everybody want to be able to play like him in that? It, when, it, when he's really on song and can practically do anything, do you all wish, in some respects, you had that level of natural talent? Yeah, I'm, I'm sure everyone does because he makes the game look so easy. I mean, when he's at his best, I've always said I don't think nobody can touch him. If Ronnie turns up and he's switched on mentally and everything's right, I think he's unplayable at times. And I'm sure everyone wants to play the standard of snooker he plays, but it's not always going to happen. And obviously, sometimes he comes to tournaments and he doesn't play his best and lose to people who you wouldn't thought he'd lose to. But uh, yeah, it's tough. I mean, everyone's got a different technique, everyone's got a different strategy, and that's why it's so interesting. It is fascinating when, when we compare the styles of all of the players there. And Ronnie's written a book, as you know, he describes you, I'm sure you know this, as the torturer. Yeah. Um, saying that you've had different mentalities, different philosophies, saying you tortured Graham Dot, Neil Robertson in the Masters, Sean Murphy too. But he says, I have got a lot of respect for the way he goes about getting results. Uh, he says that John Parrott has the best name for you, Stickability Selby, because he's going to stick to you no matter how well you play. Yeah. Uh, do, do, you, do you understand that? Do you, yeah, do you agree with that? Yeah, I understand where he's coming from, because like I say, I never give in. I mean, I've seen players in the past who play O'Sullivan, and when he gets on top of them, they more or less like, you can tell that they're sat in the chair dejected as if to say, well, I might as well give in because it's pointless, which obviously is not me. Until they get to the winning frame, like I say, I'm always going to be digging in and, and sticking in there. Is it pretty? Would you like it to be prettier? Uh, at the end of the day, I mean, obviously, whatever people say, that's their opinion. I understand that. But uh, it, it doesn't really hurt me what people say. At the end of the day, I've won tournaments and obviously I've achieved what I've achieved. I've got to number one, so I must be doing something right. Well, he's certainly done a lot right, but the torture has, uh, is being tortured this afternoon. Um, if, if it were you that was being described as the torture, would you like it? Could you use it, Ken? Absolutely. I think I'd use it to a positive. I mean, if, you, if something like that annoys your opponent, you know, and, and, and obviously, as he said, if it's in the back of Ronnie's mind, then use it to your advantage. I mean, not everybody can play like Ronnie O'Sullivan, you know, and, and Mark is, is, is very right there in what he says. I think he's got a really good attitude that, you know, 
he never gives up, you know, and he's seen players that have collapsed against O'Sullivan when O'Sullivan's gone ahead. But he knows, and O'Sullivan knows, which is more important for Max Selby, that he's not going to give up and he's going to be trying for every ball. And yeah, it's nice to be able to play like Ronnie O'Sullivan, but not everybody can play like that. The, the thing about this game and any sport is about winning, you know, and you, sometimes you can't always win pretty. Although we don't love to, but and sometimes when you're not winning pretty, if you're winning ugly, your name is still going on a trophy, and, and at the end of the day, that's the most important thing. Ronnie will expect him to regroup at some point, you would imagine. Well, yeah, well, Mark's created this reputation now, and you've seen this week even the, the great John Higgins struggle to go over the line because he's just got this reputation. He's so hard to beat. It, don't get, get me wrong. Right, Mark Selby can play the same game that Ronnie plays. He can play all the shots, and that's the way he wants to win. But he's got this fantastic attitude that he never gives up, and, and that's you know served him so well. It is indeed, and uh, you know this has, and indeed had at the start of the match, the makings of a classic. It might still turn into a classic. You never know with Selby around. But we have had some fantastic matches in the Masters over the years since it first began in 1975, and this man.